What's cracking guys, Omar Esau here, back with another video. This video today is going to be all about testosterone and its relationship with muscle mass. How important is testosterone levels when it comes to building muscle? I'm bringing for this video an expert onto the channel, someone that could speak with authority, James Krieger, who has researched this topic extensively to explore the relationship between testosterone and building muscle mass. If you look at the research since the 80s, there has been a decrease in testosterone. What's going on with that? I don't like them putting chemicals in the water that turn the friggin' frogs gay. What's the significance and how concerned should we be about testosterone? And is it even realistic to compare our physiques to old school physiques from the early 1900s from individuals like Eugene Sandow if testosterone levels were that much higher? Let's explore this topic. Timestamps are in the description. If you like this style of content, if you learned something from this video, make sure to like the damn video. Check out all of James Krieger's articles linked in the description, and let's get this video started. What's going on, guys? I'm joined by a very special guest today, James Krieger. Some of you guys might not be aware of who he is, but you will after this interview today, especially if you care about lifting knowledge. James is an undercover assassin who's been responsible for contributing a lot of information uh, into the fitness industry. He's published a lot of things alongside Brad Schoenfeld. Uh, today, we want to talk about testosterone and its relationship to FFMI because there are a lot of bros out there that say, you know, Men back in the day, when we give it examples of true naturals, you know, from the early 1900s, they'll say, yeah, but uh, men had, you know, much higher testosterone back then. We can't make the comparison. I want to talk a little bit about that testosterone, its role uh, as it's related to muscle building. James, thanks for being on. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. Yeah, and uh, so for those that might not be aware then, for you to hype your own damn self, why don't you introduce yourself to the audience? Yeah, so I've been in the fitness industry for you know, it's probably 20 plus years. So uh, um, I publish a lot of research, like you mentioned, um, have my website, weightology.net. Uh, um, you know, I've uh, um, have two master's degrees, one in exercise science and one in nutrition. And yeah, uh, um, yeah really heavily involved in the research side of things. And uh, um, I'm just pretty much fascinated by any type of thing that deals with modification of body composition, you know, whether it's muscle gain, fat loss, stuff like that. So yeah, and we're, we're going to link everything in the description because, like I said, you're just killing it with the information, and that's why I'd rather go directly to one of the sources when we talk about some of these potentially controversial or important topics. So I guess the first question, James, that I'd want to ask you is, can you just define testosterone, what it is, what it does, why it's even relevant maybe to anyone that cares about lifting? Yeah, so testosterone obviously is a uh, – is a, what we call an androgenic hormone, um, and uh, both males and females produce it, but males produce like way more. Uh, it's produced by testicles in males. Uh, it's actually produced in the ovaries in, in females, or, or it's actually, I think, from the conversion of DHEA into testosterone in females. But um, So men have way more testosterone. Um, it's responsible for things like facial hair growth and the deepening of the voice and everything like that when men go through puberty and stuff like that. Um, uh, then, of course, the, the effect that everyone is interested in is its anabolic effects. Right. Um, it stimulates muscle protein synthesis, um, and it's one of the reasons why men tend to carry more muscle mass than women. And obviously, pretty much all anabolic steroids are some type of derivative of testosterone. So, okay. um, so that's why everyone is, like, so interested in it. Okay. And so... That's testosterone. Let me ask you then a point blank question. How important is testosterone for building muscle? So it is, but it's not. So, um, and I think this is where the confusion. So a lot of people think, well, if I have more testosterone, I'll build muscle faster. Yeah. And that's actually not really quite true. And, and we know that because if you compare the rate of muscle gains between men and women, on a relative basis, the rates of muscle gain are about the same in, in terms of a percentage basis. So you put a man on, a, say, a three-month training program and they get a you know 5% increase in muscle size, a woman will also get a 5% increase in muscle size. Right, relative to their body weight. Yeah, relative to their body weight. But the females just have much less muscle mass to start with, so 5% on their muscle mass is much less, in absolute terms, is less than what a man will put on. Sure. Right? And so... 
what you know if you look at that evidence and you look at um, you know some evidence where they you know um, take people with low testosterone and bring their testosterone levels up and things like that what testosterone seems to do is it seems to affect the base level of muscle that you just carry whether you train or not right um, and um, but you don't necessarily gain muscle at a faster rate um, but the thing is is if you if you take really high doses of testosterone basically you elevate your base level of muscle so much higher so then if you gain you know 10 percent muscle mass on an absolute level that's more than you know someone will gain who has has a much lower starting level right okay so, yeah let's let's get into that uh, james a little because you made an important distinction between maybe naturally produced testosterone levels and then those that take a super physiological dose which is in excess, it depends upon the individual, individual, but it could be several times the amount of testosterone that any natural individual produces. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, we think of, you know, some pro bodybuilders and stuff like that. Obviously, those guys are taking, like, suits, I mean, such high doses of testosterone. I mean, um, but, um, but even if you look at uh, variations in the physiologically normal range, you know, I used to think that, uh, you know, because if you look at the physiological range for men, it's Pretty fairly good. wide. I mean, yeah. you're talking 300 to 900 nanograms per deciliter, depending on what lab t- uh, lab test you're doing, and you know, because different labs have slightly different reference ranges. But um, that's a fairly wide range. And actually, I wrote in my research review a really long article on um, testosterone and how much it actually impacts muscle gains. And actually, do variations in your physiological levels matter? And the evidence I uncovered is it, it does seem to matter, for example, um, but again, it affects your base level of muscle. It doesn't affect necessarily the rate of your muscle gain. So right. um, so someone, let's say, with a level of three, 300 nanograms per deciliter will tend to carry, have a, a lower baseline level of muscle than someone with 900, right. you know, even within that physiological normal range. Okay. Um, I, I had made some estimates that for every was it for every 100 nanogram per deciliter increase in testosterone it was associated with about a half kilogram extra of lean mass right you, know, you, so you would have as baseline james yeah as right. your baseline okay so not a huge amount but but you know i mean a half kilogram that's like one pound you know yep. around there so um so someone you know let's say compare 900 to 300 uh you know that's a difference of 600 um, that's a difference of about, um, what well, we'd say about, uh, three pounds or so, which is, so it's not, so it matters, but n- probably not to the degree that a lot of people think it does. It, and know? then, yeah. And just to reiterate, James, what you just said, which I found interesting, it improves the baseline level of muscle mass that you hold onto that you have uh, without weight yeah. training. But if you were to take two individuals and all of the things are equal, let's say they both weigh 150 pounds, but their testosterone levels are different within the natural range. So you take someone that's, you know, at 300 and someone else that's at 900, um, the baseline level of muscle mass might be different, but if they're both to weight train, they have the same potential again, and all those things, just testosterone is different. The amount of muscle mass they could put on as a result of weightlifting would be similar, you'd say? Yeah. Um, So the guy with a little bit more lean mass, his absolute gains will be a little bit bigger um, but the percentage gains will be the same, right. you know, because like I said, you know, um, if you've got, uh, I'll just make up numbers, 100 pounds of lean mass, yeah. you know, versus someone with 110 pounds of lean mass, you know, if you're gaining 10% every three months, that's one versus 1.1. Exactly. You know? Yeah. So, um, uh, so it's not a huge difference. Um, so people tend to overemphasize the importance of testosterone um, as far as, you know, like, you know, if you're not making progress in your gym, you know, you think, oh, well, maybe my testosterone levels are low or whatever. Yeah. It's probably not the case. Again, it's, it's mainly just affects the base amount of lean mass that you carry. Uh, James, so what's the relationship then between testosterone levels and then the fat-free mass index? Yeah, so um, if there's a relationship, I mean, we know there's a relationship between testosterone and your baseline levels of fat-free mass. So by default, that means there's going to be a relationship with fat-free mass index because right. fat-free mass index is just relating fat-free mass to your bone structure or your height or whatever. So um, um, now I don't know of any studies directly correlating fat-free mass index and testosterone, but there is plenty of research showing not only correlations between fat-free mass and testosterone, 
but also uh, there's uh, this one guy, Boston, B-H-A-S-I-N. He's done all the testosterone research. His, his name's everywhere. And, and when it comes to testosterone administration type research, he's done studies where they'll suppress people's testosterone production. Um, so you're basically like a eunuch. I mean, yep. you got like no testosterone. Yeah. And then, um, then he'll give them different doses of testosterone to mimic different uh, physiological levels and look at fat-free mass. And he found a dose-response relationship. So yeah. even in the physiological range. So, um, um, so like I said, I mean, it all comes back to yeah, it's gonna, you know, chances are guys who are have higher FFMIs probably have somewhat a little bit higher testosterone levels. But I keep wanting to reiterate, it's not an enormous effect, you know? No. I mean, again, we're talking, like I said, someone 300 to 900, you're talking maybe an extra three pounds of lean mass, you know, yep. not, not a huge amount. I mean, it's still, I mean, every pound matters, but it's not like, um, you know, you're not talking like a, a 10 pound difference or something like that. Yeah, and, and I guess so. That really is important what you just said to leapfrog into the big question then because for a lot of individuals, when they are given the examples of people in times past that are truly natural, so uh, individuals in the early 1900s before testosterone was synthesized, and we take a look at some of those physiques, a common critique that a lot of those people will say, oh, they might look good, but you know, testosterone back in the day was so much higher and so we can't replicate those same physiques and so I guess the first question I want to ask you is testosterone levels over time what does the research show amongst the average population yeah so for people who are trying to go all the way back to the 1900s testosterone yeah. levels weren't being tested back then so we don't even know you can't say that we do know there's data to show since around 1980 yeah. um, average testosterone levels have been slowly decreasing in men but there's a, a big confounder there is that also men have become more obese. Like obesity, you know, skyrocketed, has been skyrocketing since 1980. And we right. know that there is an inverse relationship between obesity and testosterone. Right. So chances are that decrease in testosterone that's been happening at least since 1980, in my opinion, is probably most likely due to obesity. Right. Um, and not due to any other, you know, some people have tried to say, oh, estrogens in the environment and all this stuff. Yeah. I, I don't know if the well, evidence your tinfoil is... hat, James. Come on, bro. I'm, I'm tired of the science. I want to hear, I want to hear some crazy conspiracy theories. It's in the water <laughs> and it's changing us. Sick of being social engineered. It's not funny. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I just don't know of any good evidence to support that, you know. Yeah. Um, like I said, I mean, the, the, the strongest relationship I would say is, it's just the increase in obesity. Um, um, I mean, there's a number of studies showing that uh, when you carry a lot more body fat, your testosterone levels are lower. Yeah. Um, so, um, so that's the thing. Sometimes the number one way is sometimes to increase your testosterone, at least if you're overweight or obese, is to simply lose, bo is to lose body fat. Right. You know? And then I guess so. to get back to that point that you're making about testosterone, that even if hypothetically, so let's play with the hypothetical scenario here, that there was higher testosterone because we do know the natural range it what it's not like even if individuals had let's say 100 years ago on average higher testosterone we still have that limit rough limit for most people let's say whatever 90 some percent of people that'd be between 300 and 900 so even if let's say the average is 300 these days back then it was 650 what, what would that even amount to in terms of you know well, yeah i mean again you're talking an extra couple pounds like yeah. um yeah so and that, but that's, I think that's actually a positive way, you know, for some people, uh, I'm not saying some of the individuals are looking for excuses, but it takes the authority back onto yourself that really it's yeah. up to you in terms of the physique that you want to build and how hard, how much effort that you put in. Um, you shouldn't look for excuses such as testosterone to be the ultimate determining fact. I can't, I can't build the best physique I wanted. Guys, I have average testosterone, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is there anything in closing that you'd say for those out there that they should keep in mind when it comes to testosterone as it's related to lifting? Any uh, misconceptions that you see that, you know, maybe personally piss you off from doing, you know, some of the research and actually um, studying this stuff? Probably nothing to add to what I just said. I would say that uh, there are a lot of other things I think that ultimately impact how much muscle you can gain, probably way more than testosterone does. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's a lot of genetic a aspects when it comes to 
how much muscle you can put on that has nothing to do with your testosterone levels. You want to optimize your testosterone levels, get enough sleep. Yeah. Don't carry too much body fat. Yeah. Um, make sure you're just not, you know, radically overtraining. Yeah. Um, and, you know, try to keep your stress level somewhat down. And that's going to be the best way to optimize your testosterone levels, you know. So. Wait, 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 I just want to know where do the bull testicles come into play? Because I've heard, I've heard from the same <laughs> things, if you want to really jack up your testosterone, all right, like the ancient Romans used to do. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, the only way you're going to do that, you have to, you actually have to consume them raw. Otherwise. Wow. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's very important though. I, I know we made that video, uh, myself and Eric Helms, just about natural lifters back in the day and the largest critique by people about those that had those physiques back in the day, testosterone game. Like, oh yeah, but their testosterone was higher. So it's, it's really cool to see what the research shows, what we yeah. know. And, you know, yeah, there's gaps maybe in terms of the research, like you said, testosterone levels back then, we don't know. But we can make very educated guesses in terms of the impact and what it would really do. That's the thing. It, even if it was higher back then, it wouldn't have been dramatically higher. I mean, yeah. you know, I mean, I know since 1980, I mean, it, it, I've looked at the curves of drop in testosterone. Maybe it's gone down around 100 nanograms per deciliter on average yeah. uh, since 1980, which is not an enormous decrease. Yeah. And again, certainly not even close to enough to um, have dramatic impacts on lean mass levels. Yeah. You know, so. Hey, James, I just want to say right now, thanks for being on the channel. Thanks for breaking all this stuff down. I think this is an underrated topic. I appreciate you looking into it, doing the research. Where can people find you? Because you are, like I said, a ninja assassin when it comes to this fitness game. Where like, you're behind the scenes doing a lot of work. But, like, you know, you put out, you have a, a research review. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, you go to my website, weightology.net, W-E-I-G-H-T-O-L-O-G-Y.net. Um, yeah. I have a research review. So like like I said, I have, it's probably a seven or 8,000 word article on testosterone, just what we just talked about. I kind of bas basically gave you the too long, didn't read version. Yeah, um, <laughs> right. But I go through all the research on testosterone in there, in the research review. Um, uh, you know, I have, you know, stuff on training volume, training frequency, um, uh, I review individual studies, you know, things like that. Um, and then I've got a lot of free content on the website too, like articles. Uh, some people who know me may, may know about my, you know, series on insulin that I've yeah. written. You know, it was a very popular series. Um, and also my series on body comp testing. Yeah. Um, uh, and then other podcasts and stuff that I've been on are up there as well. So, uh, um, yeah. Guys, that is the video. My thanks to James Krieger for being on the channel. If you like this video, if you learned something in this video, I'm looking right at you. You made it all the way to the end of the video. You could throw away your overpriced, overhyped, worthless testosterone pills. Like the damn video, and I'll see all you guys, my rascals, in that next one. Peace. Eat your vegetables, eat your vegetables, eat your... Bam!